International Newswire, Telefonica powers up as contents player. Never say never again. For months, executives at Spain's Telefonica have been questioning the cost of Spanish La Liga soccer rights, plus those two UEFA Champions League and Europa League matches, which hasn't stopped it scooping this week Spanish rights both tournaments, for the 2019-22 seasons. The La Liga deal comes just a month after Movistar Plus signed up Netflix for carriage in Spain and Latin America. Movistar Plus has now released seven original series, and announced late last month its first original movie, Alejandro Aminabar's Mantras Sure La Guerra, marking the most energetic push into scripted content of any telecom in Europe. When it comes to entertainment, it looks like Telefonica wants it all. It has paid 980 million euros, 1.1 billion dollars, for each new La Liga season in the deal, 360 million euros, 420 million dollars, each Champions League and Europa League season, a net cost up just 5% on the 2018-19 season, it said in a statement Friday. The deal comes as the June auction of Premier League broadcast rights, at a total 1.55 billion pounds. 2.0 billion dollars, was about 10% down on the prior auction, and Italy's Serie A, its top football league, managed to extract from Sky Italia and perform a combined 973 million euros, 2% less than for 2015-18, for 2018-21 league rights, according to Ender's analysis. Related Greta Gerwig in number 039 semicolon s and number 039 semicolon little women and number 039, Eyes Meryl Streep, Emma Stone, Sayoy Ersronen, Timothy Chalamet Ubisoft CEO Eve Guillemot wants to reach 5 billion players in a decade but this isn't just about soccer. Telefonica's La Liga and Champions deal marks it out, with Sky Italia, as Southern Europe's key and most aggressive pay TV player. Telefonica is now targeting the upper end on the market, aiming to drive average revenue from not just pay TV but also triple play subscribers, building a mass subscriber base, said François Godard, at Ender's analysis. This way it will become harder for not only Vodafone but also for Amazon or eventually Apple to build alternatives ecosystems, he added. They will have to go through Telefonica. Nordisk Film and TV Fond backs Atlantic Crossing with record funding one way to flag one of the biggest Nordic series as it moves towards production. The Nordisk Film and TV Fond has just announced its largest production grant ever, given to the eight-part TV series Atlantic Crossing, 5 million Norwegian kroner, $612,000. Show run by Alexander Eich, Varg Vum and a true event-based story of how Norwegian Crown Princess Martha escaped from the Nazi-occupied country and became an influential voice at the White House as President Franklin D. Roosevelt deliberated entering WIAI. Atlantic Crossing is not only internationally distributed by Beta Film but backed by the five Nordic public broadcasters, NRK, SVT, Drive, Landryuv. Norway's Cinenord drama produces. Beta and a broad-based broadcaster alliance were behind Babylon Berlin. Atlantic Crossing's makers will hope it will also help redefine the ambition of foreign language drama series. Europe, Beak TV? Or is there much growth at all? Some industry players have warned about Beak TV in Europe. It doesn't seem to have happened. But is there really much growth at all? Some of the most interesting statistics at last week's Connecta Fiction TF forum came from Spain's JECA, an audience analysis company, which analyzed series premieres in Europe's Big Five production powers of the UK, Germany, France, Spain and Italy over 2014-17. Of the five territories, Spanish production was flat, 19 series bows in both 2014 and 2017. Italy's was down. 27 in 2014, 17 last year. In production volume, the UK and France were up, but not exponentially so, 64 new series in the UK in 2014, 77 in 2017, 23 French series debuts 4 years ago, 30 last year. Only in Germany. Up from 35 series in 2014 to 54 last year, is there clear production growth.
cash crunched free to air network budgets are partly to blame. But it's also a case of ambition. In many countries, producers are focusing on not more drama series but better and sometimes bigger titles. Production volume is just one metric when judging Europe's TV growth. Globo sells jailers, under pressure to ask a why Italia so what? Few networks are so steadfast in announcing their international sales than the Brazilian TV giant. What's new is the territory, and the type of buyer. Globo's telenovelas are catnip in Eastern Europe, but rarely clinch sales in Western Europe, outside specialist niche channels in Portugal. Though ratings blockbusters in Brazil, neither jailers, nor under pressure qualify as traditional Globo scripted products. Jailers is a just 12 episode penitentiary thriller, featuring its flashpoints and the conflicted ethics and private life of an upstanding prison officer. Under pressure turns on the daily heroics of doctors at an under resourced hospital on the outskirts of Rio de Janeiro. Both are co produced by top movie companies now highly active in TV, Gullain and Kinsprazau. Both won awards at TV events, Jailers the Grand Jury Award at 2017's MIP drama screenings, under pressure for statues at France's FIPA. Their natural market is far from that of traditional telenovela fare.